Hey everybody, back again with another Vi Top game. This one's going to be spicy, it's versus Lee Sin. Now, I'm a goofball, and my microphone <laughs> didn't pick up during the game, so this is going to be a voiceover. So, based on the fact that I'm versus Lee Sin, and he has his Q and W, plus a slow on his E, the cripple. It felt more beneficial to go Hail of Blades into this matchup than Lethal Tempo, because if you go Lethal Tempo, he can usually hop away and kind of deny the stacks of the Lethal Tempo. Same deal with Conqueror, um, but it's better if he gets away from the lethal tempo. So Hail of Blades allows for quick trades, which he's going to be going for anyway. So it allows you to duel him a little bit more in lane. I also went Bone Plating, because if he Qs, then he has the ability to, you know, Q again, and then E, and auto attack and whatnot, so it blocks a lot of his damage. At the beginning of this game, however, this Lee Sin was smart. He queued me from the bush, and then he waited for my bone plating to fall, and then once it fell, he reactivated Q. So he is a rather competent player. Here I'm looking to try to get a cheater recall by pushing in three waves. But it looks like Zed is up here. Although I could potentially fight this with barrier in my minions, it's better to just leave. I have to flash away from the Lee Sin Q, which is irritating, but it's what happens. It's that you're at risk of getting ganked early, especially if you try to do a cheater recall. It looks like the Zed did three camps in the top lane. So Lee Sin ended up getting a freeze down, so he's going to be exceptionally higher level than me. I just have to play safe and try to soak XP where I can. He missed his Q so I can stay up here safer than normal. He could still ward hop and do a lot of damage, but my main goal is just to get some XP and avoid his Q. He completely whiffed it there, so I got really lucky. I could have taken a lot more damage than that. It is slow pushing to me, and since Zed already ganked, he should have been on the bot side now, clearing up towards top again. So I am very susceptible to a tower dive here. Ooh, looks like Lee Sin's being really tricky with it. I apparently don't have all chat on, so <laughs> I otherwise would have said that was slick. Um, that is a very effective way to bait out my Q. Um, I would have canceled his Q. I believe he still would have gotten the damage off, though, so it's just a little trade to get my passive up. Here, I got exceptionally lucky that the Zed was a low elo player and didn't come up for a dive because I should be dead here. I end up just getting to collect the minion wave for free and he's doing some more tricky stuff just to try to bait out my Q, make me miss some more minions. Here I'm still going to aim to level up my E. It's going to be majority of my damage. If I miss my Qs, then I'm doomed. Also, this Lee Sin, me, <laughs> while he isn't great at landing his Qs, he's very good at avoiding my cone damage for my E. He keeps sidestepping or angling himself so that he won't get damaged by it, which is super unique. I've never had anyone do this to me before. So here I've got a slow push um, going towards him based on the wave state. So what I did there, I just traded into him. I wasn't scared of dying by any means. But, if you trade into them, and they have some sort of AoE move, like Lee Sin's E, or Mordekaiser Q, Darius Q, whatever, um, it forces them to push the wave just to get a trade in with you, 
and so I'm able to keep the wave here despite the fact that it was slow pushing to him. Me eating the wave in return does the same thing and slowly pushes it back, but here I mainly want to not get dove because I feel like Zed could be up here again. Once again, he just isn't. Um, he should be because I'm not level 6 yet, but they might have been scared because I was hitting it really soon and have barrier, which is super good to bait people. Here I believe Lee Sin recalled, but I want to hold um, doing anything drastic because I didn't have my Q up. He hasn't shown, so this Q is risky if he's in a bush, but he wasn't, and we got the wave pushed in, meaning it's going to bounce back to us, and we can get a pretty safe recall without fear of him freezing it on us once again. So despite the fact that Lee Sin keeps missing his cues, he's playing this pretty correctly. He's trying to deny me this cannon, but I really want to step up and get it, so I E this minion just to secure it. Um, it should still push to me despite the fact that those minions are low health, but I'm going to E him one, or e the minion one more time so I proc his bone plating. I Q away because if he lands his Q, he can do a lot of damage to me, and the way he's pushing to me anyway, I don't want to be low under my turret. I ward once again for Zed, who hasn't been coming, but just in case, I will be aware. My team's on Dragon, meaning Zed should be around top here. The only other objective is Rift Herald, and I see Galia walking, so I'm just going to check and see if Zed is currently on it. Oop, we found a wild Zed. If I was in range, I could have R'd him. I did want to take this, but I see Lee Sin coming over and Galio still wasn't showing. I Q over this wall because I felt like Lee Sin was going to try to Q me since he had vision due to that uh, Scryer's Bloom. So just to negate him a little bit more. We see him walking down river and going in on my Fizz, so here I'm just going to try to hard push. I miss the back line because I'm terrible and cancel an auto attack because I opted for two adaptive force. I believe that attack speed is better than adaptive force because it just feels smoother on the champion. However, if you're into ranged matchups where you poke a lot with your E, double adaptive does feel pretty good. So although they <laughs> they warded this, I want to take the Rift Herald. Graves started it, but he just kind of ignores it. Um, here I take it on my own. In the game, I didn't realize that it was warded. I thought Lee Sin warded the Tri Brush, so I just opt to go for this and take it as fast as I can by myself. Which I like to do normally anyway, but Lee Sin pushes pretty darn fast, which is sketchy. So here, I didn't think that the Q hit me, and even though he was behind me, my Q ends up hitting him. I could have flashed away, but I didn't think my Q would hit him, so I end up dying for this play. But I got the objective, and the wave is probably going to crash into my tower, but I think it was net worth. So to catch you up to speed, Graves comes up to hold my wave, and Lee Sin engages on him. I'm here for the follow-up, because I used lock screen, it looks super goofy. I flashed to get in range, and because the wall pushed Leeson slightly to the side, and because I have tier 2 boots, I was able to catch him. He <laughs> takes my cannon, and because I'm not toxic, I thank him for the uh, holding the wave. I have Rift Herald, and I want to push top. Leeson doesn't have TP, and I looked at Galio because I feel like he might be coming up since he and Zed were just mid lane. So I end up tossing Rift Herald here because I know I won't be able to get plates when Lee Sin comes back up, so I want to use it as effectively as I can now. Galio shows up to catch the wave, and so I have to back off not knowing where Zed or Lee Sin are. Lee Sin ends up going mid lane right here and is catching the wave, which is proper macro, so good on him. At this point, I'm positioned back up top lane, and Lee Sin's up here. I was out of vision, so I'm going to see if I can get a cheeky Q on this guy. I don't believe it's warded. I don't know if he was just checking that or not. I emote just in case. I'm not really losing any minions. So here I attempt to go for a Q, but it looks like Lee Sin was ready to avoid it. So I just don't throw it at him, and I get the minion after all. I still didn't have all chat on, so now I turn it on. Just in case he was saying something at that time. 
here to catch the wave. There's going to be a dragon spawning soon. Um, Lee Sin isn't here, and we see Zed bottom. So this is an interesting play, but I saw Zed's red buff spawn. So what my option here is, even though it's 13 minutes and plates haven't fallen yet, I want to deny the Zed and get myself a cheeky red buff while he's down to the dragon. So I go to invade instead of defending my tower. Zed ends up dying, and I do end up blasting this red buff for a little bit. Leeson gets a plate or two. I'm not sure exactly how many, as in he hasn't done it yet. Um, I believe he ends up getting two, which is 300 gold, so not worth it <laughs> in the grand scheme of things. But I end up rotating mid here because there are still plates up, and I won't get anything by going top since Leeson has it pushed. So here, I end up getting two plates back myself, just before the plates fall. I queue for a sheen proc, and then I get two plates, so I get 300 gold back in my pocket. So Leeson ends up getting the tower, and I go into this bush for a cheeky Q, but he's walking away, so it doesn't really amount to anything. I'm not afraid to fight him at this point. As you can see, he's still an expert at landing these Qs. So I'm playing up. I end up getting ganked by Zed. Zed ulti, when you Q, you will hit him as he comes out. His Eclipse gives him a shield, but my ulti lasts long enough to not hit it. He ends up flashing my Q, and Lee Sin follows up. With my barrier, I almost was able to 1v2 that and get one kill, possibly two. But given the fact that he flashed in a good way, he ended up getting out with a sliver of his HP, and I end up dying. So essentially at this point, I'm not super strong, I'm not weak by any means, but I'm not the strongest. I walk over to Rift Herald in case Lee Sin wants to fight. I see him land his Q, so I hover out of vision just in case he takes it, but we see Zed walking over, so it's better to call it off. We end up going towards the top side to my 1 HP tower here, and since this cannon minion is low, I want to deny the cannon to the Lee Sin and let the tower kill it. I back ping the Graves so that he lets the tower kill it, and Graves just taps it, Leeson gets it with his Q, <laughs> and so I irritated question mark ping him. It's totally pointless. It's 90 gold. Um, I mean, obviously 90 gold is a whole pink ward, but it's better to deny your opponent as much as you can, when you can, but he just wanted to increase the tempo and keep schmoovin'. So, I can't really fight the Leeson. I might be able to, but I don't want to test it that far up, so I end up going for his Gromp. Zed wasn't showing on the map, and so going up to the Lee Sin at that point wasn't the most beneficial play, because if Zed was around, I would have gotten 1v2 again. While my team is pushing up mid, and now in base after being bottom, I just go up and catch another wave. I can't play up any further than this. We know Brand's around there, and the other two are missing. So it's a best play to just recall since my team isn't really on the map and there's nothing to currently pressure. A big fight just broke out bottom and Dragon's coming up soon, so I opt to try to take this right before the opponents can. I don't know if this bush is warded or not, but I'm just going to try to maybe get a free kill. Leeson's very defensive about it, and then I just end up walking away. These two are playing pretty far up despite there being a buy and a fizz. So I just Q flash to get in range, and I want to kill this guy. Fizz takes the big shutdown, which is unfortunate, but for the state of this game, 
Fizz is the only AP, so it's probably more beneficial that he has it, given that most other people can just buy plated steel caps and death stands and armor and whatnot, and just negate us as champions. I opt to go back towards top here. As you can see, my Graves is playing incredibly far up, with nothing to pressure on the map. I back ping the, the annoying person who's like, oh, there's a fight about to break out. I end up starting to walk over here in case I can do something, since my ulti's up in 10 seconds. It's a really awkward position, since he just died and two of them died. I don't want to fight it, but since I see Lee Sin so close to my carry, I end up hopping over the wall and trying to join the fight. I see the Twitch, he walks into me, I expected him to leave, and I end up getting a kill here. Jinx ends up getting two, there's no point for me to chase Galio, so I'll just take the jungle and get what rewards I can from here. There's a big wave top lane that I'm looking at, but might as well take these first. They end up pushing mid, I don't have mana, and by the time I get there the enemy team will be there anyway, so there's no real point for me to join them. They seem to be over pushing given that Zed's there, but yep, and after a fight, they don't end up buying, they push too far, don't get anything for it, and end up giving another kill to the Zed. Wonderful. Here I want to play towards my team. Jinx is still respawning and Thresh is pretty far up for having no one around. We see Lee Sin bottom, so we can maybe look for a play if someone steps up. I st I'm just hovering around the graves in case Zed wants to ulti him. I see them full engage. I tried to buffer my ulti through the Galio R, but didn't get it. I CC the Fizz, or sorry, the Twitch for a little bit. My team didn't follow up, and they were most likely back pinging me at that point, but given that they're muted, I don't care. I got a one for one trade, no objectives up other than Baron. But since I killed their jungler, it was a reasonable trade. My team picks up another kill. I respawn and head down for the Lee Sin, who unfortunately gets the full 600 gold from this tower. Essentially two kills. My team is on the Baron, and I want to get up to them as fast as I can, so I don't stay to fight the Lee Sin. <laughs> Naturally, they steal the Baron, so... Bummer there, I go up to try to catch something, they're already done fighting by that time, so I just push the mid wave, two of them are dead, so maybe we can get something while Lee Sin's bottom. I end up wanting to recall, don't realize that Death Stance is procced and so it was bleeding me down. I see that Lee Sin isn't pushing bottom, so I'm just going to head top, potentially get this top tower and maybe a brand kill for myself, while my team pushes mid lane once again. We see Lee Sin, so I just walk up. Looking for Brand, I Q in case he's recalling right there, I Q in the bush in case he's recalling there, neither happens, he has Baron buff in hindsight, and so he would have been long gone at that point. I go up to catch the top wave, we see Lee Sin half HP, so I'm going to be cheeky in case he goes for the wave, and I want to Q him, I can definitely kill him at this point, or I feel like I can, he is pretty bulky, and if I looked... Yeah, he's got Death Stance and Armor Boots, so he's going to be pretty beefy. Instead, I start walking towards the Dragon, and we see him maneuvering there as well. I don't want my Fizz to get caught out. He's already half HP. We know that Lee Sin was there, so step down to avoid the Q. Don't give them much information. Give them as little as you can. Here, I'm wanting to play like an Assassin. I don't go in on this just because I don't know where Twitch is, and I want to save my Q Flash, or Flash Q, for Twitch ideally. So I'm just hovering around until he shows. My team can play frontline, I don't want to. My only goal is to lock down their carry. He clears out a pink ward, so I walk up to see if they get vision, we don't know. We see Brand here, so I Q over the wall and I flash on top of him just to secure that it hits, and I walk away from my team here. 
it's now a 4v4, and I don't really want to be around the Zed because he can get a free kill. So instead, I will just push out the mid lane, see if I can get some more damage on that mid tower. Although Galio is bulky, I feel like with the barrier I can bait him into a fight. He does have Aftershock, so he's kind of scary. He hits me with everything. I'm at 1 HP. Get my Blast Shield proc. CC him again. Get my barrier. And I win the 1v1. But my team ends up getting a triple kill to the Lee Sin. So here I just choose to run. Um, I go up to this bush because it's an unlikely location. And hopefully Lee Sin won't stop me here. We get the recall off. I still have ultimate since I wasn't in a fight recently, and I never had to use it. I Q in just barely out of range, so I have to wait for my Q so I can get it again. I would rather have the Twitch die, so I go for him. Zed is a lot more slippery than Twitch is, and so it's far easier to secure a kill if you get the R landed on him. So here I want to go Black Cleaver, although they don't have any blatant tanks, it's still pretty strong for our Graves and Jinx, and me of course. Right here, I end up going towards the bottom, we see Galio walking down, and I'm going to hover around the Fizz. The Graves is already hovering around the Jinx, and they're strong enough to deal with whatever. I end up playing kind of a jungler role, and I'm posing between the two lanes rather than split pushing up top lane which I could be doing but instead I'm here looking for a pick trying to find twitch we see the mid lane I ideally want twitch here but he ends up walking away so I just go play with my team get some vision IQ in on the Lee Sin can't really walk towards that Galio not a whole lot I can do I miss my blast shield so I end up having to use it there, and then I use my R just for a little bit more CC, but he is far too tanky to die from that too quickly. Team disengages the fight pretty well, and all is well. Here Baron's up. I kind of want to go bottom side to get that last tower, open up the map a little bit. It's pretty absurd that it's still up. My team goes for a couple trade kills, naturally, and it's just pure chaos of low kilo, it's pretty usual. So here I am, just going to get an objective. Baron's the next thing on the map. Um, I don't really want to be around it, I would rather draw pressure across map, see what I can do. This is the awkward portion of not having teleport and having barrier or ignite or whatever else is the fact that when you split push, you really have to commit to it, which isn't always a bad thing, but you can't quickly help your team unless you have a lot of movement speed. So here my entire team's dead, their entire team's pretty much dead, so <laughs> I'll just push out this last wave. I won't be able to push it out any further, we don't know where the other three members that they have are, there's Lee Sin, so instead of backing in the lane, I'll back over to the side, just in case he pushes it pretty quickly. Naturally, the next place that you find Vi is sitting in a bush. Lee Sin was just pushing, and I was going to see if I could possibly do something, but it doesn't matter too much. I'll just push out the wave and then rotate to my team. We see Lee Sin go on the graves here. I walk towards the Krug wall in case I can queue over. No one hits the blast cone, so he gets out pretty much for free. Rather unfortunate, but I'm very tanky, so I'm just going to man mode walk in here. I'm not actually going to queue in. See Galio doing that. I have queue up in a second. So my goal is just to shred a little bit and not spread the brand massive to my team. Due to the death stance and that we didn't keep fighting, I get burned down a lot. So here I go for the brand. I see my teammate. I go over the wall. We get a pretty big fight. I knock them all away. Graves gets a big quadra kill. And I just go to push the mid lane as Fizz is already top lane. 
and Graves is walking. Although Baron is up, they are all dead, and if we get the permanent objectives, it is far better than if we just get the Baron for another few minutes. I tank the turret just because I can. More minions for the Nexus Towers. And that's game. Quick easy push. I didn't do a lot, but sometimes you gotta get carried by your team. Thank you for watching.